Good evening. We have a form. We'll call a planning board meeting to order. First up for general information is Melissa Teft. Um, yeah, I'm Melissa Tuff from 112 Stockbridge Street, and uh, I'm asking for a permit to move my business, my psychotherapy business, to my home. Okay, yep. um, Everybody going to be here? February 10th? No, December. I want to tonight. Yeah. No, me, I'm going to get surgery for my spine. I'll be here. So we'll have a meeting on January 1st. Well, Jimmy, if you, it's far enough away from my Stockbridge land, so I'll, I'll be here and I can vote. Unless it be out too much. We won't be meeting on January 1, so otherwise it's going to be January 15. You want to do this immediately? What's that? Immediately? Want to well, I, I would like to do it as soon as possible. Yeah, but, yeah. I mean, so I've talked with the abutters, there's three of them, and they're fine with it. So, so why can't we just meet? Earliest meeting in December. We don't need a because the earliest we can meet is the earliest we can uh, meet and, and, and uh, qualify by the by the the bylaw and state law for uh, locations the 18th. That's fine for me. Okay. You run this business anywhere else? Uh, yeah, I'm in Northampton right now. I've been a psychotherapist for 30 years, and so I've been 15 years on Sylvester's, above Sylvester's in Northampton. What so makes you move out of there? Um, just well, I'm getting a little older. I want to move home, and I'm going to work full time for another year or two, but then cut back a little bit. Okay. There's, there's the huh. date, the date okay. of the hearing. Okay. Pay this to the town clerk for that amount. Okay. For that application, and leave that leave the entire set with her. Right. So I go to the town hall. So when you go to the yeah. town hall with your check for the filing fee. Give her the entire set, and okay. then the legal notice will say if anybody wants to see the application, it's available at the town clerk's office, yeah. okay. and that's how you make it available by bringing it. Okay. Sounds good. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you. Seeing Jeffords. Sean. Jeffords. Sean. 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 I'm sorry. Yeah, it's spelled the funny way. Yep. Um, so, Sean Jeffords, I own Beyond Green Construction. We operate out of East Hampton, Mass. We do green building, energy efficiency, solar energy. Um, 10 Rocky Hill Road is for sale. Um, I asked what type of presentation. They didn't say to bring anything, so I don't have a bunch of copies. But I do have the owner's original as far as the plot. I've spoken to the building inspector and a few others in the town hall. It seems like there was a little bit of confusion as far as um, the current zoning, the use, whether it's pre-existing, non-conforming, 
what we might be able to do with the building. Where's 10 Rocky Hill Road? It's, it's, it's the old uh, Ganotics building. That's so agricultural and residential. Yeah. Right. And so currently, um, the building zoned agriculture residential. Is well, go ahead. I'm sorry. I'm just trying to check in as far as what would you guys like to see a building of that design used for, um, given that it really doesn't fit that kind of a... It's, it's a former farm stand. Right. So how big is your business? How big is it? We have about 10 employees. No cool. Are you trying to move your business there? Yeah, we're trying to okay. move it there. We were also thinking about, I have um, somebody that's interested in, in running a farm stand in combination with it. So th they got approved under what's called the agricultural exemption to Chapter 40A, which says that a farm stand, if you're basically selling your own product, there's a, verb, a confusing formula, but you can run a business in a district that doesn't allow businesses if it is an agricultural business. Okay. So I don't believe that that grandfathering extends to anything else, and it's been out of business for a while. So it's basically a residential property. He asked me to pass this along from the Board of Health. <clears throat> how many, what do you, I mean, what do you have for vehicles and equipment and stuff like that? Um, we have um, several trailers and a couple of pickup trucks to tow them with. And you're, you, to, to qualify that for a home occupant, you, are you going to live there? Uh, we weren't planning, it's you, not you, really you, a, you need to live, you, the owner, needs to live there okay. to qualify for home occupation, home business. Mm -hmm. Okay, otherwise you need a zone change from the town meeting. Okay, um, <clears throat> the current building and this plot plan says that it is business zone. That's where it's no, it is not business zone. Okay. <clears throat> um, so basically, the existing building and him trying to get any value out of it, you know, there's no residential property currently there. <coughs> what type of guidelines would apply? How many, how many acres are there? A farm stand is one. A third or so? A, far, a farm stand is the only permitted business at that site. If what it was residentially occupied? It, does, it doesn't need to be residentially occupied. Okay. Okay. A farm stand is a permitted use under Chapter 48. There's mm -hmm. an exemption for it according to state law. Any other business use, the owner would need to live on that property. Okay. And <clears throat> under the, is there any kind of criteria for the farm stand that I could look up? online or just trying to determine just Ch chapter 40a chapter 40a look under master in the laws chapter 40a i've got exactly what section it is but it gives you reference to farm stands in there and then that direction to another area that this this describes agriculture okay, okay. Uh, just because the other piece was just trying to determine you know it's really difficult to make a living on farmland these days, especially because it's such a small season and wondering, you know, the winter months being close to 50% of the, the time, is there anything that could be piggybacked along with that, like a little coffee cafe kind of setting? Yes. Okay. Yes. Th th again, that is all defined under Master Chapter 48, and if you look at farm stands, there are three farm stands in Hadley that sell food okay. and so sugar shack in north hadley that has is a farm stand exemption except they are there and limited business so owners a little bit of a different doesn't qualify for the exemption as it's now written anyway because that has to be five acres i think mm, not if it's a farm stand well i believe there's a farm <coughs> look up in chapter 48 i don't i think it. it's section three 48 section three yeah and it, it describes about a farm stand, about so much, so much of, the, of the goods need to be grown within the state of Massachusetts, not necessarily on your farm, on your property. Like you can buy from somebody else as long as they're grown within the state. Right, because that's it's the a, other tricky thing is it's not even a very large garden yeah. area. How deep is it? Um, yeah, probably something like that. Yeah, you're not even going to be eligible to grow marijuana there. Not much, you know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. 
So uh, this this sketch is is incorrect in calling this business zoned. It was a business use, but it was a, an exemption. Yeah. So that does not continue. With yeah. the, does Mr. not go with the land. Yeah, Mr. Gnadik did go to town meeting to get a business zone rezone on that property, but it failed. It failed. Okay. Okay. All right. Um, and with the uh, with a five acre exemption, I know it does apply to 61A, which gives a reduced uh, tax relief to farmland. But uh, and it may dovetail into that. Uh, well, it's actually under the Dover Amendment of all things. <laughs> no, that one doesn't. No, the, no, yes. no, no, it's, 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 it's not. It's, it's not section it's three, not. but that has nothing. The Dover Amendment has nothing to do with it. Yeah. And so a property like that, um, if a residential building were to be built, it could be located without connecting to the, the farm stand itself? Just yeah, it just has to be connected. It just has to be on the same parcel. Okay, I got you. Okay. All right. Um, so. What is your business? Is it listed as agriculture use? Uh, no, not this business. Anyways, I was I was looking to see my daughter's looking to start a little business, so we were looking to kind of go in on it. We don't actually need that much space. We were looking at it more like a showroom opportunity, because we already have uh, an 8,000 square foot uh, production facility in East Hampton. So it was more just trying to, you know, piggyback along with that because the price that he's looking for is kind of steep for. Um, you know what it currently is and the yeah. limitations and yeah, because there's a there's there's a on South Maple Street there's a Cook Flavors farm that sells food sells agricultural products as well as ice cream and other things. Barstow's Barstow's up in uh, uh, no okay. not front right. up the road in Hockenham yeah. and uh, Sugar Shack in North Haven. Sugar Shack in North Haven, like I said, does is, is in a limited business zone. So it's a little bit of a fuzzy area there but the other two are strictly agricultural residential and they're located <laughs> on farmland mm -hmm. not at that residential property and do you know offhand um, what kind of limitations would come along with um, the different foods that are offered along with it's the all on the statute it's, all yeah. the, it, it's a it's a com it's a very complex yeah. formula based on whether you're selling products that you grow on the same site products you grow on other land you own or products you re buy wholesale from other Massachusetts farmers okay. and there are various percentages that I see, I see. qualify you for yeah, it. It's, okay. it's, 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 it is not clear. It's a good read. It's, it, it, <laughs> it's a difficult read, yes, yeah, it's a good, if you want to call it that. Um, it'll, it'll take some time to read it and try to digest what it all means. All right. but you, you could come here and make the pitch. Okay. And uh, we send yeah. out letters to a butters and if there's objections, and that's where your real problems are gonna come. Right. Well, we're not even gonna send out well, letters to, we're this. not even gonna accept an application right. for something that's not allowed right. in right. the district. Yeah, completely, yeah. completely. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, like I said, a farm stand with some associated uses, if, if, if it's agricultural, is one thing, but to put a business on there, it's a whole other story. Okay. Okay, good luck. Thank you. We've got a couple minutes. Let's see, we do have a bill from Pioneer Valley, Pioneer Valley Planning Commission for $1,347.37 for services from July through the end of September. Ooh, that's part of the contract. Yeah, for the contract, yeah. That's their, that's their the one they've been doing with the marijuana. How far are they the internet? This was, well, the, the beginning of the fiscal year is uh, July 1st. July 1st, so this is the first first quarter. So that's the total of what? 1347 and 0.37. And we have $7,500 on that line. Right. So they're <laughs> barely, uh, not even a half. Not even a quarter. Not even a quarter. Mm -hmm. yeah. I'll make a motion to pay Pioneer Valley Planning Commission 1347.37. Second. All in favor? In the discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Can you vote? Motion passes. For some reason, we had two. We 
got a meeting, a notice from uh, FEMA that they are conducting a federal emergency management agency upcoming risk mapping assessment. Um, one meeting will be held on the 27th of November at 1 to 3, 1.30 to 3.30 at Turner's Falls, and the other one on the 28th of November from 10 to noon at the Jones Library in Amherst. If uh, anybody's interested What's in the one in, in Adley? 43 M.A. Street in Amherst, and one is the other, the first one is in Turner's Falls. Mm, what's that all to do with? Connecticut? The, the flood map. Flood map. That's up the updating of the flood, right? Um, so when's, when's it in Turner's The first one is the 27th from 1.30 to 3.30, and on the 28th at the Jones Library, it's 10 to 12 noon. Let's see. This is about, let's see, it's a risk map. Um, helps, ident helps communities identify, assess, and reduce their flood risk by combining quality engineering with updated flood hazard data. Um, what are they actually going to do? You're changing the flood maps for insurance. So that, that's December or January, Jim? November. 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 Wow. Next week. Next week. Oh, so that's. Um, okay. Yeah, I put this 28. One Monday and Tuesday? Uh, Tuesday and Wednesday. Tuesday and Wednesday. Twenty-eighth is a Wednesday. Twenty-eighth is a Wednesday. I might try going to the Wednesday one. I might try going to. I think we have to RSVP. Well, there's a questionnaire on this thing. I just got this. I just it was in a in our mailbox. We'll, we'll look at that after the meeting. Does uh, David Nixon? The, are you familiar with this? Yes, I got an invitation, same as you. I also had a previous uh, conversation with them, and they're looking at uh, redoing the flood insurance maps in order to take into account changing the climatological uh, conditions. Um, they've also been using uh, new uh, modeling uh, forecasting tools in order to plot out the 100 and 500 year flood plain in uh, the Connecticut River Valley. So this is something to pay attention to. Uh, uh, I'll try to avail myself of some of the training. Uh, more information will write down. Are you filling out the attached questionnaire for them? Yes. Okay. Okay. So what are you, what is that? Was there an RSVP on this? Yeah, there was something on the bottom of the first page. Okay. Kind of unusual that they don't include Hadley in as much as we have the greatest exposure to okay. flooding. When it's flooding, in it, when it's yeah. flooding anywhere in the valley, it's not flooding in Hadley first. <laughs> General information, there is a finance committee meeting uh, next Tuesday at 6 p.m. in the town hall to discuss um, their usual finance stuff, whatever they're talking about. Usual building, budget processes, next year's budget already. Uh, is all I have for general information that we have. Okay, I don't have anything else. Okay. And with that, we'll reopen the public hearing, or continue the public hearing, of the uh, Senior Center and Library. Mr. Attorney Reedy. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman, members of the board. For the record, Tom Reedy, uh, attorney with Bacon Wilson over in Amherst here on behalf of the Senior Center and the Library on uh, this continued public hearing for a site plan review special permit and the erosion and sediment control uh, permit. So the last we were here a couple of months ago, we went away with some homework. We had a very productive discussion, and we also got some guidance from the select board. Um, and essentially, that guidance was to reduce the size of the senior center, which we've done. Um, and that, in turn, has impacted the parking, and I'll go through those numbers in a moment. And then we also wanted to put a finer point on emergency access, and so we've also um, relocated or received a relocated easement from the American Legion 
And so the easement, as shown on the plan, is actually where the easement is located now. As you'll recall, it was over where those parking spaces were, but it has been shifted to the east. So when we're looking at the senior center, originally the proposal was for a 12,098 square foot senior center. That is now reduced to 10,350 square feet. The library originally was 12,142 square feet, has not, it was redesigned throughout the process to 11,635 square feet. That has not changed since the last meeting. So combined, the senior center and the library are 21,985 square feet. As far as parking was concerned, uh, previously the senior center had a design that it had outdoor seating, and I think it's uh, the Esalon rule where you were counting that outside patio um, for, uh, for the parking count, for that two to one parking ratio. That patio has been eliminated in addition to the square footage that I mentioned. So previously, we were required to provide 49,622 square feet. Currently, um, with this new design, we're required to provide 43,970 square feet. And in fact, we provide 44,751 square feet. So we're completely compliant with that two to one uh, parking ratio. Um, and then as I mentioned, we also have put a finer point on that easement relocation. For good measure, we sent the plans over to Berkshire Design to take a look at the parking. Uh, you should have in your packets their response confirming that the parking complies. And then we also asked them to take a look at the stormwater and make sure that that was uh, satisfactory. And you should also have in your packet um, that response saying, yes, it is satisfactory. We're happy to get into as much detail as you want on the plans, but I just wanted to give you the Reader's Digest version of what we've done in the interim. Question regarding the uh, easement over the Legion land. Uh, you do have, the town has how many feet? 30 feet in width. Has there been any added to that 30 feet to? No, so what happened was the, the original easement was all the way to the west of the Legion property where the parking is. And effectively, and that was 30 feet wide, so if you started at the westerly property line, came out 30 feet, Correct. that was... And then there was some added in one of the plans to, to the east of that easement. So, I'm not exactly sure. It, it might have looked like we were adding some, but what we've effectively done, Mr. Zagrodnik, is taken it and shifted it over. So that 30 feet still exists, but instead of being over that parking, it has been shifted east. So that now, if you'll follow, the westerly edge of that easement is now at the former easterly edge of what the easement was. And so the 30 feet, it, it lines up better with um, where the curb cut actually is on Route 9. But in effect, you're taking Legion land to move it. No, so, no, so instead of, one of the things, so the town had the right of way over the Legion land to begin with. How many feet? 30 feet. Yeah, correct. And instead of saying, well, we want another 30 feet for a 60 foot total, you did. Once upon a time. we've shifted it yes. so there's only 30 feet in width. And so effectively that easement as it existed on the westerly side has been abandoned because it's been relocated to the east. Sure. Uh, this plan was put in our box by the uh, town administrator's assistant. This was the right of way. This is the new right of way. All right. And they, the Legion now, this reverts to the Legion. The 30 feet is now right down the middle of the parking lot rather than along the edge. This, this makes a whole lot more sense because before they were taking 30 feet of parking. Now they're putting 30 feet in where there was a roadway and the parking lot. You can still use this as parking. They, they, They've essentially done a better job. For Has the Legion agreed to that? They have. Yes. Is there any barriers between on the easterly side of that? Of the right of way and the balance of the Legion right. parking lot? Is, is that a barrier there? So no, that is that is only to show um, the demarcation of that 30 foot right of way. What is that going to be? There, just black top and painted lines? Yeah, let me get the layout. Yeah, I don't even know if there would be painted lines on that easterly side. Um, 
I don't think you would be able to distinguish a difference of where that actually is. I thought ends. in your memorandum of understanding that they were going to strike that whole lot for the Legion. No, not, not the senior center project. No. No, the county. That part. Yeah, so we're going to strike the, the row of parking that's on the west side of their property that abuts uh, Mr. Coach's property. So those 11 parking spaces, that's going to be part of the senior center project. This is curious. The, uh, I see the fire chief isn't here. Usually we ask for two entrances for the fire truck. He seems to want three now. Mm -hmm. Why? I mean, is there any legitimate reason? Uh, I, I don't think he views the, the one way out as a second. Uh, they always go one way down Route 9 even, so it's not a hindrance. I, I think he views this as the second means of entrance. So, John, to your question, that says there is going to be a gate at the, at the, at the No, I'm not talking about at the northerly property line. Yeah, property yeah, I'm line. talking yeah. about side, side lines to lease. going north and south, but on the east to lease border of that easement. So there's anything except painting and blacked up. Oh, what are you looking at? The memorandum of understanding? The easement, this is the oh, easement relocation agreement. Okay, and then, then there's this on top of it. The memorandum of understanding. Well, this is the, I believe this is what gets, this is copied on the registry of deeds. Yeah, so, I mean, if I that's, could. That specifies specific to, to the easement itself. Correct, and I think what Mr. Uh, Michkowski is talking about is a separate, because there was a lawsuit filed by right. the Legion, I believe that there's a member, memorandum of, under, of understanding, pardon me, uh, between the Legion and the town, which is what I would consider separate and distinct from this approval process, though it is still binding upon the Legion and the town. So what's your question, John? Is it being complied with? Has it been signed? No. I was just worried that there was some kind of barriers between that where that 30 foot easement to the east ended and the other rest of the Legion parking lot. And no, <laughs> there, there won't be. Where is the parking that is taken up by the building that the Legion used that under this memorandum of understanding? Is be, the parking is going to be designated at the senior center. It says in, in paragraph 8, uh, once the new senior center is built and occupied, the Legion may use parking in the spaces between the new senior center and the new library construction zone for overflow parking for special events. Where are those parking spots? I asked that once before from you, and you didn't know. It's the whole parking area. It's parking. It's whole parking area. Then where is the seniors going to park? The same yeah. park. Because so you're going to give them the whole parking. The whole parking lot. Yep, that would be the parking space. So how many actually parking spots between both this memorandum of, of agreement and the senior centers do you have? I'm not sure. What do you mean you're not sure? Yeah, I'm not sure. <clears throat> well, in this memorandum, they're taking the, the roughly 30 parking places that that building, where that building's going to be situated. And the selectman said, well, don't worry about that. You can use those parking. So that's in addition to what they have. And you have now, by downsizing, the correct number of parking just for the building, but not for this. We don't have to take into consideration that memorandum. I'm not asking you. I'm asking him. The, the agreement's to the select board, John, not with, not with, with them, with us. But it's to do with parking. 
That's, and that's what it's in here for. But it's not to do with the senior center itself. Do it's you have any have other neighbors that you're going to allow to park on this site? No, because the Legion will have a key to that um, gate to use. But it, you missed the point here because you're giving them parking and allowing them parking that you don't have there. That is designated strictly for the senior center. John, that's built for, don't shake your head no. That's, that's built exactly a downsize and you have the proper parking places for that particular building. John, it's not it's assigned parking. It's overflow. Question, question on for the senior center and the library. You have how many parking spaces? 120 or give or take. How many do you actually think you will need ever for, for normal events? Currently, we have 55 spaces in this lot. Okay. In this lot? In this lot. Okay. And do you fill them up often? No. No. Okay. You know, my, my feeling is that the Legionnaires sign that agreement. They can read it. Uh, it was their responsibility to make sure that it was enforceable. I'm looking at uh, this a different way. I'm looking down the road in the future because this town has in previous years repurposed buildings. So if 20 years, 30 years, say they don't need a library anymore and repurpose for another municipal use or the senior center for another municipal use or there's more programs that come forward but there's not enough parking where are you going to make up the parking in the future if you're short now for the size of the building I'd like to address I'd like to address that if, I don't know if it's our position to get into the weeds if if the uh, Legion and the senior center are both having a an event on one night someone's going to have to change it I think they can work together saying the Legion has their monthly uh, dinners then we will not have a special senior center event. For that uh, so they can work something out. Uh, for us to get into the weeds and designate so many parking places that the Legion can use, and, uh, uh, I don't think it's, our, anything if they it's our position. Sign. I think we just have to comply, make sure that everything applies, and that's where Jim uh, is going. I wouldn't be saying anything if they didn't sign this memorandum of understanding to allow them to park in a parking that's been the building has been reduced to comply with the zoning. And that leads into another problem because when, when these contracts were signed with this OPM, and that architect over there, wherever he may be, it, it states in there that they must comply with all applicable laws, rules, regulations. The the architect under, under Article 4, Section 4.1, the designer shall perform the work required under this agreement, included AIA document B201-2007 uh, attached is confirmed with, with all requirements and standards of the awarding authority, all applicable laws, statutes, ordinance, bylaws, codes, Rules, regulation, executive orders, statutes of the Commonwealth and political subdivisions of the federal government, the Constitution document shall comply with all applicable laws, statutes, ordinance, bylaws, codes, uh, rules, regulations, executive orders. And the same is written in the OPM's contract. Yet, they didn't follow their own contract. In fact, they came back later and the selectmen just signed the change order 
Well, what's in all, uh, uh, for the contracts in a tune of $140,000. And they should have, this guy here, OPM, is supposed to be the watchdog to make sure everything is done correctly. I don't know what the hell he was watching, but he wasn't watching the rules and regulations. Just because if, if the selectmen, right, you just confirmed to order them to downsize their building because they weren't in compliance. This building, if they were on the ball, and that architect was on the ball, and now you got Mr. Lawyer there, was supposed to advise them. Nobody's doing their job here. This building would have been under construction in the month of June. There was no question about it. No question about it. But the fox in the hen house wasn't doing their job. Just one point about Colliers International, just to make sure everybody knows, this is not a Massachusetts corporation. As the contract says, Colliers International is actually based in Toronto, Canada. The stock trades on the over-the-counter market. It has a market capitalization of almost two and a half billion dollars, annual revenues of 2.8 billion, and assets under management of 25 billion. So this is big business we're talking about here. You know, we can have niceties here, but if Hadley has some type of claim against them under the errors and emissions policy, we should go after it. It's our right and our duty. Miss. Um, Jess and Eric um, from 125 Hawkeye Road. I, I understand the rights and duties of that, and I actually agree with you. Um, if we, they, you know, they, I see the idea that they failed that contract, but at the risk of delaying this project, the cost might be just as much. Is, is the expediency of it a little bit more economical at this point, especially since? We talk about the rights and duties of this town has spoken about it. I don't think it's a reason to delay the contract, though, but I want to make sure that the town does everything possible to scratch back any funds that were missed. What's, what's your time limit okay. on everything? That's else? no, okay, that's it. When we're not here to discuss the contract, Mr. Mishkowski made his point. They're, they're facts. However, they're not the planning board's jurisdiction. Look, at, I was threatened by one selectman with her hand up already. If I didn't vote for this, and I was threatened by another selectman oh if I didn't goodness. vote for this. I, I never threatened anybody. Yeah, you did last week when you called me. John, you said John, if I don't vote for this, you will never talk to me, and don't you ever call me again. Did you say that to me, or did you? I most certainly did. And I hung up on you. That's, yeah. that's the first time yeah, I've been right. threatened by anybody. Well, let's, let's <laughs> I, I will give you 15 seconds. That's all I need. I just want to say that the Legion uh, members have signed in good faith a memorandum that we as a town will honor. And we also have a signed uh, easement from them. And they were more than happy to do that easement with us with no problem. And we have both of those in fact. We have worked very hard get this project in compliance with the planning board and work for it to get the project done. Period. Too bad you didn't work. Is that good 15 okay. minutes? Fifteen seconds. Fifteen minutes. You wouldn't want me to go on. No. <laughs> All right. Just uh, okay. From the lawyer, is there any problem that they say it's a Massachusetts corporation when in fact it's headquartered in Toronto, Canada? Uh, with all due respect, I mean, I, I think we're just going to try to focus on the merits okay. of the site plan. Yes. All right. Of back, back. Where were we? Your we're question talking about parking. Yeah. Oh. The uh, getting back to parking is not unusual for a business. The bylaw is a bylaw on 2-for-1 parking. You have to supply area for 2-for-1 parking, period. Whether or not you put in 2-for-1 parking. We've had, have had several businesses in town that have been required to do 2-for-1 parking. They says, you know, we don't need that much. Do we have to put that parking in? No, you don't but you need to supply the area in case it's ever needed. In this case, they're putting the area in. Maybe it's not needed for what they said by the, by the senior center people. It may not be needed right now down the road, like Johnny says, who knows? But at least at the present <coughs> date and time, there's more than enough parking 
to the senior center and the library. And if the Legion uses 30, 25, 50 spaces, I don't know what they're going to require. There's probably enough parking for everybody to coexist. Down the road, if it changes, well, it changes. We only can design within reason what we have today and for the immediate, even the reasonable future of these two buildings in the Legion, I doubt we're going to see a major change. Yeah, we're going to get older, no question about it. We're going to get more older people, but I don't think we're going to be overwhelmed, okay? So, um, you know, you, you can't guarantee that. That's right. There's no, no crystal balls. Only guarantees of taxes and debt. <clears throat> the other issue is that the Legion and the Senior Center keep very different hours. They're evenings and weekends, and we're weekdays, 9 to 4. Okay. And even when they have a few holes, so they're well, 15 seconds later. Quiet. <laughs> <laughs> hard. Yeah, All right. hard. All right. That's <laughs> okay. Um, I'm going to up, up next. Mr. Attorney Reedy. I mean, I think we've touched on the uh, two remaining outstanding items. Right. Oh, landscaping. What was, what, what, now that we've d done some different changes with the uh, parking and the green and this, and this to see on the right side of the, the, the two thousand square feet that were taken from the building, where did that essentially go? So the west side of the building is the left hand side of it, um, shrunk in the right side direction. So essentially, where we had an outdoor patio seating area, that all got pushed that way and got decreased depth wise off the building. Okay. With the two thousand square feet, was it turned into parking area, green space? Parking area. Parking area. Oh, well, you added actually added more parking area. Well, we I think we added what was it four parking yeah, four spaces. Parking spaces. Okay, and the rest was green. Right. Yes. Okay. So where's your snow storage? So we've got an updated letter that should have been provided to you um, from the co I'll call them the co interim DPW directors. Just essentially reaffirming uh, Marlowe's original letter um, that the clearing and removal of snow is an operational issue that will be handled by the DPW. If removal is needed from the two sites, the snow will be hauled within a reasonable amount of time to the previously mentioned town-owned property. And it essentially just confirms the previously identified stance. Just for the record, it falls into a when Marlowe was still here, we mentioned it to Marlowe, but I don't know if the new director knows it. This is not any aquifer. The, so the snow that's taken off of this site cannot be stored or dumped into the aquifer region. Okay? It's kind of a technicality, um, but he's going to have to definitely put some plate that's not in the aquifer region. 20 years ago, we built two uh, projects in this town called the elementary school and the safety complex. There's plenty of room for snow storage here. This is New England. I can understand why this thing was designed with no snow s storage. And there's a cost of removing it, hauling it, and disposing of it. Otherwise, it could stay on site and melt. Yeah. Just one other question. On April 13th, 2016, Mel Overmeyer, managing director, sent a letter to David Nixon. Does he still work there? He does. And he said, it, you guys are going to protect the interests of the town of Hadley, reduce costs and maximize value and preserve the project schedule. Lastly, ensure construction quality insurance, which hasn't happened yet. You think you've accomplished the first three of those? How is that applicable to this? Well, we're talking about costs. And you're charging us extra for something that was supposed to be done in the first contract. Hey, right side, you, you put it in a bill for $100,000. Hey, 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 Mr. Chairman, Mr. Chairman, Mr. Chairman, I just wonder if you guys were going to have any corporate responsibility and might uh, scratch okay. Hadley's back a little bit uh, because of errors that were made. That's uh, all. Okay. Yeah. 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 I hope you don't mess up the public safety company like you did this. Okay. Um, landscaping for it, like shrubs. So we originally were talking about shrubs along the property lines. Yeah, I mean, <clears throat> excuse me. I, mean, I think that's still the case that uh, the the latest iteration of the plan was going to have those arbor vitaes as we had talked about like when we were over at Hopkins. C two hundred. Okay. Where's the plan on on the planning on the whole site? Everything. Where is it? The planning plan. Oh, the planning plan. C two hundred. Yeah. Yeah. C two hundred. We don't have it on here, yeah, but we got a board. Okay. 
We'll bring it out here because it's an important thing. Did you say you were bringing two full scale yes. plan sets? Yes. Maybe it would be good to. That's a great suggestion. Get them out. Yeah, where did you guys say so? There's one here on the board. We haven't, I haven't stated it. I'm going to get the drawings. Otherwise, the rustler makes noise by the microphones. If the rustle drawings against the microphone, it really makes a horrendous noise at home and on the uh, YouTube and stuff. So. Is there any kind of barrier on the southerly border to stop the residents that live in these houses here to walk back and forth through this property? I see they park cars out here, they park cars over here, and they walk back and forth through here. Is there anything to stop them from doing that? Like a four foot on a boundary line, four foot fence or anything? You're talking about the neighbors who live on right, on the right southern here. property. That they don't park their cars in the parking lot here and use this parking and their friends and and walk right through their backyards into the houses. No, we, we currently don't show a fence, no. But that could probably be addressed with the police department. We have some signage, you know, parking yeah, out here. You tow, tow the cars a couple times. What they won't it? park out there. What about putting a four foot fence down there? I don't attention. think that's a good idea. I think why like, towing the cars a couple times, they won't park there. They'll stop. I know after I got my car towed once for parking where I went before I lived in Boston. I didn't park there. I get cool. Well, they're doing it now. So yeah, but they're not towing the cars, I don't think. You tow them. It starts costing them 150 bucks to get the car back. They'll learn quickly where's, they can't park there. Where's all the, sh the planning for the... Here's the here's the spell. These are all the arbor to here. I believe the top. The, the shrubs on the top and the bottom are all arbor biting. Correct. Yeah. Okay. okay. Those are three or four feet tall. Where's the other, the other building? Oh, yeah. see, where's the library park? Any Chris, do you guys have a landscape plan done? We don't have a landscape plan done. We do not. Do you have? We have. Where's the library on here? The details. The plan set. Yeah, man. Part of that. So they just haven't stapled it together yet, but we have two uh, copies of both. Oh, yeah. Oh, right. it's, it's in the back of that. Oh, okay. Oh. It's in the <coughs> you, do you have a landscape plan? We do not have a landscape not. architect at this time. Why is it incomplete? We're still in the design development stage on this project. We don't have a, a plan to plant. Is an existing hedgerow that runs along the northern property, property no, line? No, whatever, uh, the whole no. site. The whole site. We wanted the complete, we said we wanted a complete set of plants for everybody. That was detailed a year ago. I understand that. It's a development. I don't have a plan for you that's completed. It's well, the same complete then. Now, Jim, I thought we talked about, you know, we talked about, we talked the, about storm water, we talked about site lighting, but there was an understanding that they were behind us design schedule wise. So they would have to come back to the actual formal site plan approval once they had No, they, they're, they're getting site plan approval tonight. They, they, this, was, this was well documented. We said we wanted a complete set of plans. We were approving both sets of drawings. We weren't approving one at a time. We're approving the senior center and a pad site. Yes. At this point, with further review of the design, lighting, and signs of the library. But this is just like Home Depot, where we approve pad sites for other things as part of the original project. This okay. is a site. This is a site plan. This is not a site plan. 
I mean, if I could, I may disagree that um, while the site plan might not have all the landscaping on it, I think it still shows all of the open space, which is one of the zoning bylaw requirements that we have to meet. And so if you are going to have the library team come back for the lighting, et cetera, perhaps you could include landscaping on that as well. But so as far as the thing is, is, you have some of it in here. Yes. I just don't understand why you're not. So um, this page, SL1A, is a lighting plan, apparently, for the entire site. We, do, we have done lighting design for the entire site. OK. For the library site. Uh, this one up here is a parking summary and open space summary for the entire site. This one seems to be a drainage summary for the entire site. put this up there so you can have that available because we don't know. Can you find anything in the agenda? Okay. So yeah, there is a lot of stuff here that does. The only thing that's missing is landscaping. That's the only thing they don't have. I wanted to draw through the, what was presented of the library way back several months ago. Is that still an accurate depiction of the library? Yeah, in terms of the, of the floor plan and No, no, the not the floor plan, plan, but the actual, what the building will look like. Yes. It's so like the building itself has a chance, it's not only took a couple hundred square feet off of it for some reason. I want to see different. the planning. Where is the planning? You don't have the planning plan No, here. they don't have one. You said that. They don't have a planting plan for the library. We'll set up another date for them to come back with it. We can require them to come back with their planting plan. That's true. Yeah. Are you going to be putting plantings around the building? Foundation plantings for the most part. That's um, what I mean. Yeah. And then we'll have some, we may have one or two trees in the lot itself and on the, on the islands. <clears throat> Is there any trees on the no northerly boundary or the south southerly boundary? No. No trees. The no, the there's, no, there's, there's some growing there. There's, there's a heavy line of trees along the northerly boundary. Yeah. Yeah. We're, not, we're not impacting that. But are they planting anything there around no, no, behind no, there? No, anything? Oh, maybe go back to the green space. It basically is, it, what is this? Just a bare building and blacked up? The site along the southerly property line is, um, for the most part, in the, in the library portion of the project, um, pretty much against the, uh, the existing. Um, parking for this for the library, and there's parking along the backside of the uh, of V1 vodka. What's the front of the building going to look like? This Just is, there are large what? there are building? large trees out there now um, that are in the in the public way, and we're going to maintain those. Um, and so the canopies on those trees are so large, we're not planning on any trees, new trees in the front lawn. There's no shrubs or anything yeah. that's going to nope. be shown. We will, we're planning on some foundation planting around the building. It's going to be pretty limited. Uh, but is that your footprint? Yes. Why was that so difficult for you not to have that for tonight? I, like I said, we're in design development and the landscaping plan hasn't been developed yet. We've really just um, <coughs> caught up with our uh, civil engineering drawings and that's the, that's the, the civil engineering drawings are the base that the landscape architect uses to develop this, this the landscape. Well, I think all people here would agree there was some, there was some urgency to have everything together tonight. Everything is there except for the landscaping. Yeah, right. Just making that up. <clears throat> right. That's typical of you. Oh my God. Now, I, I, as I look through this, uh, there, yeah, there, there is. Okay. Yes, there, there is a site-specific set of drawings in here as in site specific, but um, you know, this, it, it, this has been frustrating to deal with a, a site plan when the project is not being designed, when the site's not being designed by the same people. Um, well, can't you get them both together and stay both? And that, that's, I question why they can't do that. If I, I mean, I think we have for the most part, as Mr. Dwyer pointed out, with the stormwater, the lighting, the layout, those big items we have. And I would just suggest that you condition approval on coming back before receipt of a building permit 
on the submission and approval of the public meeting of a planting plan. I mean, I, I, I'm, not, I'm not against that, okay? My question is, why couldn't these two groups get together and put something as simple as that together? Because this was de depicted a long time ago that we wanted one cohesive plan. And site plan approval is specific on what a plan should be put. And for some reason, these two companies just can't do it. And everything that Mr. Mikowski has said and everything that Mr. Sarzinski has said about these companies specific to the senior center, I agree with. These guys don't do a good job. For whatever reason, the town is getting the short end of a stick. Um, again, it's not a planning board issue, but it is a taxpayer. We're all getting taxed extra on this. Enough said. Anything else? Is how we supposed to vote on this when it's complete. Other plans come here complete. Well, we've had plans come in or we put some Yeah, the signs in. come in later and stuff like that. Anybody audience comments? Hearing this. There's nothing in here. What are you talking about, Bill? There's nothing in here. Yeah, there is. Yeah. <clears throat> John, here's your lighting plan. For yeah, the, for, uh, for both. I asked for planning. Parking, planting summary proposal. Not lighting. There is planting. not a planting plan. For not a planting plan. Right. That's that. what I asked. But that will go into as a condition. Um, yeah. So it, again, it's frustrating. We've been going around with this for a long time. We had a, a lengthy extension to get it right, and um, it's not. It's not. Uh, on the other hand, uh, there are some other pressures facing us. Uh, you know, basically, costs are running. The costs of borrowing are uh, potentially going to exceed the costs of the overruns on the design fees um, if we delay this. Um, so I'm prepared to. I will ask for a motion. Make a motion. You were prepared on the first meeting to vote for this. Um, uh, so before before we make the motion, could Joyce just say a few words about how this thing's going to get resolved? Who's going to bring everybody together? You got a good whip. I think. I I just think that we we all will work together to get. I I, I think as a select board, we've tried very hard to finally move these projects forward in uh, getting reducing the size of the building, working with the Legion, getting the lawsuit dropped that shouldn't have been started in the first place, uh, and getting the swap of the land taken care of. So I think, you know, all in all, I think we're all headed in the right direction, and I think that we can continue on that path, and I'd like to. And I think that, you know, we'll still have other still conversations about what we need to get done. So some of this reflects my personal opinion, and the others are free to join or not join as they see fit. So I'm, I'm going to make a motion to approve the project based upon the following findings. The intended uses are not prohibited by the terms of the bylaw and are permitted thereby. The planning board is disappointed that the first municipal building project brought forward after adoption of the updated master plan makes no effort to comply with the master plan, citing the proposed senior center as far away from the proposed library as the lot allows. Because compliance with the updated master plan is not mandatory under current zoning, under the current state zoning act, this is not a basis for denying site plan approval, but nevertheless sets a bad example. The planning board states on the record that this project is not an example of good design under the master plan. The town of Hadley has secured an easement for access across the property of Old Hadley, a uh, legion post. The fire chief has proposed the emergency access between the senior center site and the legion project be blocked by a chain between bollards to block through traffic. We do not know what authority the fire chief relies on for making a decision to block through traffic, but assume the select board would have such authority and could decide to block through traffic. 
We anticipate that any agreement between the town and the Legion for shared use of the senior center parking will establish a system to avoid conflicting uses and to provide for direct access between the parking lots when appropriate. We note that any future use of the old Goodwood Library building for other than library purposes will probably require that the structure be brought into compliance with current building codes, ADA regulations, and parking requirements. To the best of our knowledge, information, and belief, there is no allowance for the future parking needs of the old Goodwood Library building on the site, on this site, um, as the parking needs of the new structures require all available space. We consider that it is a mistake to proceed with the library senior center project in isolation and without consideration of the future needs of the old Goodwin Library site. But the planning responsibility for municipal buildings lies with other boards and is not a basis for denying site plan approval. This is full approval as to the senior center only. The library is approved as a pad site at this time and is approved for parking and drainage. The library will require further approval for exterior design, lighting, signage, and plantings. Uh, work conducted in accordance with, uh, this is the final plan set? What's the... What you emailed to us. Yes. Uh, that is VHB, and there are a multitude of dates here, but most, well, calling this latest issue November 20. Um, we came out of 54 of that. Is this the one that he's referring to? Right there, yeah. This, this, is, this, this, this is the one? Yes. yes. Yep. Everything is 1120, correct? Is um, that plan statement? Well, a couple of them are. It, with a couple of exceptions. Couple of exceptions. Yeah, but the 99, 90% of them are in the 1120. Uh, except for three. April 25, October 26, and July 16. Correct. Everything. Okay, so this is that. This is that. Um, shingle color to be approved by planning board prior to issuance of building permit. Copies. Roof shingle color. Roof shingle color. Roof shingle color. Uh, proposal satisfies uh, site plan approval criteria. Uh, design features including but not limited to landscaping, tree caliper, uh, etc. will be considered, um, are considered to be an integral part of the approval design and any deviation from the plans as presented to and approved by the board will be a, considered a violation of the terms of site plan approval unless the changes are approved beforehand. There will be screening across the northern edge of the site where it involves cultivated land Arbor Vitae, three to four feet in height at planting along the length of the field. Approval is for the following uses only. Senior center, library conditionally. Landscaping installed, maintained and replaced per the plan. Um, landscaping shall be in place and verified by the planning board or a designated representative prior to the issuance of a permanent occupancy permit. Any outdoor lighting shall be shielded so it does not provide do glare or spillover. No storage trailers, shipping containers, temporary or permanent storage structures, or any other storage facility not depicted on the plans are allowed. Approval is subject to approval of other boards if and as required, including the Conservation Commission, the Sewer Commission, Water Commissioners, and state agencies with authority. Any project changes directed by other boards or agencies must be approved by the Planning Board. One set of plans will be kept on site for the use of the zoning enforcement officer. And a project will be reviewed for compliance by an independent consultant on behalf of the planning board at the cost and expense of the applicant. And the certificate of compliance issued by the consultant will be required before issuance of a permanent certificate of occupancy. And this shall not become effective until the decision is um, signed off on by the no final set of plans is signed off on by the uh, planning board. The applicant's uh, engineer certifies the conditions set forth here and are noted and incorporated. Um, and it is subject to appeal under the provisions of chapter 40A, section 11. That is the motion. Do you have a second? Motion a second before we vote. Is there a, where have the color rendering that we had of that? 
<laughs> I can get you. Uh, uh, and, and the, and the, I know we mailed you. Yeah. Yeah. But we'd like to get a color, like to get the colored rendering of the of the building. And so where is that building? You want most, most you talk about that? Yes. You want this? Yes. Yeah. You, can, you can get you that. Yeah. Is that what that building's going to look like? Yeah. Yes. That's what we'd like. Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> and yeah. Okay. That's right. Okay. That's not part of this packet. It is not. No. Is there any rendering part of the packet? No. Okay. I will add that a colored rendering is to be supplied. How okay, come we don't have renderings for our final? They don't really supply rendering to the final. A lot of, some do supply the, the a black and white rendering of the building, but the colored rendering is like above and beyond. Why would they supply it? But they do have that. We just wasn't part of the packet. Okay, that is the motion and the second. Um, I don't disagree with 99% of what you put in there, Bill, so I will not recommend or say anything about a change. Any other comments? Yeah, I'd like to make one comment. If I don't. I'm going to vote for this tonight, but I'm really pissed off that this guy, that guy, and the architect for ripping this town off and taking away money that could be used in this project and all our other projects. Totally uncalled for. The selectmen sat there and let all this happen and didn't do nothing about it. And that's why we got such a mess today. I hope the next project don't end like this. Comply with the law. They never came in once to verify what does this parking mean. There were none of these meetings. We got walking people that come in to, always tonight to verify things, what they can do. These big shots didn't come in here. They get paid too much money for that. They don't want to mess around. And then they wonder, well, they're going to jack up their fees. That's exactly what they did. I'll tell you, in a corporate world, this guy, that guy, and that guy would be fired. And I don't mean maybe. I've been in a corporate world all my life. I worked on big projects. I have never seen a blunder in my life as these three people allowed to happen. So get on with the vote. All in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes unanimously. Starting your car or starting his car? Oh, no. <laughs> uh, no.